West Tigers fans, our boys head back to the eighth one of the, of the world in Leichhardt Oval to take on Sean Bloor and the Melbourne Storm. And let's preview that game tonight. Another episode of the West Life podcast. Welcome in to another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. Please give us a follow at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter. And in that, or go to westtigers.com.au if you want to find absolutely everything we do, including the YouTube channel. Uh, if you can, if you're on the YouTube channel, seeing all of our regulars stream in, here's your little homework for this week. If you just do the share button, share it to a friend, share us around. Tell a friend that uh, that you love us and to listen to us. They might not like us, but at least give us a go. And patreon.com slash Westlife. Those, these people definitely give us a go. They join us in the Discord and there's lots of fun stuff going on. A few newbies. And on game day, the Discord absolutely goes off. A little chat room app on Discord, a little channel there goes absolutely off. Plenty of stuff, plenty of fun going on in there. It just costs a few bucks a month to support the show, patreon.com forward slash Westlife, and we'll get to their questions. So you get to submit a question every week as well, a rant or whatever you like, be part of the show itself as well every single week. And listen to the three of us swear our heads off on game day and say things that we wouldn't say on social media. Speaking of which, a man who has said some very controversial things on social media. Aaron Thompson, how are you this evening? <laughs> yeah, g'day, Josh. Um, g'day, Rob. G'day, everyone watching and listening. I'm doing all right today, mate. It's uh, a bit, bit of a quiet week so far for me. Um, obviously, tough game coming up. Looking forward to talking about it tonight. And coming in from the Red Room, Rob Bashara, how are you this evening? I'm well, guys. Hope you're both well and everyone out there as well. That was a lovely flick pass, by the way, Josh. Mm-hmm. I- Really appreciated that. Uh, looking forward to talking yep. about the Storm game uh, and you know, talking about the lineups tonight. And uh, I think we've got a bit of a crack at uh, having a win this week. How is this? Talk about the show of the world. So Riff, see Riff joining us from Miami. He's uh, Monday morning, what is it? Wednesday morning uh, in Miami. No one on YouTube is, and the name, no, no one, not no one. Uh, he's watching from Belgium, so um, yeah. if I knew some Belgian, I'd say hello, but um, whatever hello is in Belgium, but shouts to no one listening in from Belgium. I wonder if he's going to uh, Spa Frank or Champs, there's some racing going on over there, so um, yeah, I'd say Guten Tag, but that's uh, German, close enough. Uh, righto, let's get into the show, and the, yeah... Definitely a game that I've penciled in, the return of uh, Sean Bloor. And I'm qu- quite proud of the graphic. He um, he thought it was quite funny, the graphic on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, Sean Bloor as Zeus with his lightning lightning rod, got his rod in his hand, which is um, a sight to see. So uh, apparently I've been told, funny enough, speaking of Sean Bloor, that he is called Bloor God of Thunder in melbourne i've been told i don't know if it's true or not it's the rumor going around that's his nickname the uh the god of god of thunder aka thor blore to play on words they're uh they're a crafty bunch down in melbourne speaking of crafty bunch is uh chasebet.com.au if you go to westtigers.com.au there's a purple button sign up to chasebet if you haven't already once you sign up before you deposit uh Send them a little chat in a little chat function. They're really good. They get back to you really quick, the guys at Chase Bear. They're really good. Personable, bookie, unlike the uh, the big conglomerates. Very um, very good with the specials. Specials out the wahoo with, uh, with Chase Bear. What specials that yeah, other bookies don't do. So, yeah, send them a message. Say Westlife sent you. And, yeah, the guys will help you out. And, yeah, it um, have a good punt on the footy or the ponies, the dish lickers or ping pong, whatever you like. So chase bet, uh, go through the link on 
westtigers.com.au or the link on our Twitter and Instagram pages. Think about your choices. Gambling help, 1-800-858-858. And we might get a couple of betting tips from uh, Roberto Robstradamus a little later in the show. Okay, a bit of news to start with. So uh, the club did a injury update this afternoon, like, or they posted it on their um, news on their website, their app, I guess you'll call it. Uh, so a few, man, it's a long list. People forget, before we get into it, uh, guys, like the West Tigers don't get talked about how many injuries we're suffering at the moment. Other teams get a pass, like Panthers, they'll say, oh, Cleary's out for the Panthers. And other teams... They get a, like a bit of a uh, a free kick with the criticisms, but we literally have still have a ton of guys out of this side and have done for several weeks. And as it just seems like it doesn't matter, it's the West Tigers; they're not good players anyway. But like the likes of we still got Papali'i, who's our big back rower, big signing of a couple of years ago. We're still littered with injuries. This club. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's one of those annoying things, probably. And I think what you said is right about how they kind of don't see our players as good, quote unquote, players um, at the level of, say, Cleary and Tom Trebojevic and anyone else who's been out injured for a while at their clubs. Kalen Ponga is another example who's back this week. Um, but yeah, you, you see a lot of these outs for our team and they aren't talked about. And I think it's probably because we are a little bit lower on the bottom of the ladder and we're not doing too well. But, yeah, make no mistake, I, I remember reading, I think it was like the mid-season uh, report article um, from the Fox League Twitter account where they basically said for some clubs such as Parramatta um, missing Mitchell Moses and Clinton Gutherson for long parts of the season um, and how that's kind of affected their season. But there wasn't a word about the injuries we've suffered and just we're struggling again. We're destined for a third spoon, yada, 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 yada. But yeah, looking at this, like looking at this injury report, um, we're probably about to go through them, but I'd say at least three of those guys uh, are probably in our best 17. So here, here are the updates from the club. So I say probably is out. He's uh, sorry. He's five weeks post syndesmosis repair. Uh, you think my, uh, Pacific Islander pronunciations are bad. Wait, wait till I get in some Latin words here. But uh, he's due back round 21. Uh, Stafford Toll is doing really well since his hamstring te- tear. He's going to have a fitness test next week and could be available for round 19. Junior Tupo is two weeks since another surgery for his Liz Frank uh, injury. I don't know if I spelt Liz Frank correctly there. That's This is just... You definitely did I- not. <laughs> Just, just uh, putting that out there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Liz Frank. Is it a Liz Frank? I, I just use an app to, um, yeah, to go, to go behind the fourth wall here. I just use an app to get uh, Mr. Moose's words, voice into words and try to fix what I could. But um, I don't know. Liz Frank, whatever. Yeah, not that many people even know what that is. But he's due back round 21. Jaden Sullivan, two and a half weeks since his repair for a broken finger. He'll be available this week. I believe he's in Cup this week. Uh, Alex Twole, he went and saw a neuro team to look at his concussions. He's back for round 20. Uh, Alex Lobb, he's also seen some, uh, yeah, some head doctors for his concussion. He's back this week. He's in Cup 2, I believe. Brennan Tumuth now got a concussion in New South Wales Cup last week. So he's got to go through the protocol. So he's probably likely out for a week or two as well. So Rob, plenty in the uh, the rehab list there. You kind of forget, um, yeah, how many guys are out for this team? I was only a couple of weeks ago. We had 14 of our starting 30 from the squad out as well as two development players. Um, I'm going to flip this the other way, guys. I actually think, like, obviously we don't want anyone to get injured. Don't get me wrong. I think it's been a great thing for the club. Let's, let's think about it. Our season was over in May. Okay, start of May. Like, we're already pretty much gone. And you look at the guys that have got a little bit of experience, guys who've got a lot of experience. For example, it seemed like Justin Matamua was the thousandth choice to play lock. And he's finally got his start. And he's actually making good of that start. 
We've seen, you know, Ruben Porter uh, get a chance and play a few good games. Uh, and we're getting to see what the boys can offer and what they can't offer. So as much as it hurts to say this guy's not available or that guy's not available, probably with the exception of Papali'i, I don't think, no offence to the rest of the players, it makes much of a difference. But it's so good that a lot of these guys in the extended squad are actually getting time, game time, getting experience, and more importantly, getting a chance to develop their game and the coaches can mm. see what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what they've got to work on. And honestly, like I, I hope we play a lot more of these younger guys uh, for the rest of the year. That said, our starting pack looks really bloody good this week and it's probably as strong as I've seen for a long time. But it hasn't hurt that these guys got a taste of it and, and just can go back and work on their game and you know, hopefully they'll be better for it in 2025, those that stay with the club. Uh, Emmanuel point, points out on the YouTube comments there, Olam's missing from this list. Yeah, they didn't mention Olam, who he has been named in the squad, uh, Jersey 22. We'll get to that later. He's not in the run-on side, and he's I don't believe he's named in Cup. So could that be a hint that basically Olam will... Um, yeah, move into the starting side. But um, we'll talk to that. We'll talk about that when we get to the team list. Sorry, Rob? I said I'm hoping so. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, he'll be, he'll be a big in. Big in for us, obviously. Uh, but on the news, NRLW season, well, the Harvey Norman season starts this weekend. Our West Tigers girls get started in that NRLW season not far away as, and we've announced our two co-captains. Yeah, we have. Um, it's the same co-captains as last year, and I thought they did an absolutely spectacular job. So very happy for them to get the nod again. Obviously, Noddy has a lot of faith in um, Bo and Kezzy to lead the team around. Obviously, you've got the experience of Kezzy up in the forwards and the experience of Bo down in the back line, uh, directing the troops around from fullback. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this season. They had their season opener um, dinner, I think it was last mm. night. And um, looks like it was a, a great success of a night. And mm. there were a lot of people there, which is really good to see that the girls are getting mm. a bit more of the support than normal. Um, yeah. yeah, and they've got uh, their first run around. Um, not all of the girls, but I, I think like 10 out of 13 of our, or 10 out of our starting 13 from last year are uh, mm. having a run around in the game this weekend. Obviously, a mm. few girls aren't. You've also got, um, I think the girls have an NRLW trial uh, maybe next weekend it might be against wow, the Broncos at Suncorp before they yeah, play awesome. the Dragons in first grade. So there's a hmm. the season is coming and it's coming fast. Yeah, I uh, can't wait for that to preview two games at once. Maybe we'll get another NRL W uh, lady on the show too this year now that um, yeah we have a management that doesn't block players talking to us. Uh, right, let's get on to back to the men's game four this week. So taking on the Storm at 5.30 p.m. on Saturday afternoon at the eighth wonder of the world, Leichhardt Oval, as run us through the team list. All right, Jareem Buller is at fullback. Luke Lola'i'i is at on the wing, along with Charlie Staines, who has returned. Solomon of Fa'atape has been moved into the centres, with Adam Dewey as the other centre. Lachlan Galvin and Aidan Caesar are the halves. Stefano Utoikamanu and Fanua Pole are the props, with Api Korosau at hooker. John Bateman moves into the starting side, along with Samuel Afenu in the second row. Justin Matamua is at lock. Heath Mason comes back onto the bench. Sioni Fainu, Alex Safarth, and David Klemmer make up the rest of the bench. Ruben Porter is 18th man. The rest of the reserves are Talon De Silva, Solomon Aliamalo, Kit Lola'i'i, and Justin Ollum. Uh, just to, sorry to sidetrack a little bit. Just a reminder, if you're watching on the YouTube stream at the moment, give us a little like for this episode and help us with the algorithm. Uh, of this episode as well. Just notice we only got a couple of likes with uh, hundreds of you watching at the moment. Righto. Rob, the yeah, the main change is here. Heath Mason back on to the bench. So not a, not a lot of changes from Benji, but like we just said before, maybe a few last minute ones to come. Yeah, and obviously Brent Naden's out and uh, dropped, I believe, to fullback in New South Wales Cup. Uh, Fata Ape moves to right centre. As as you just alluded to a few minutes ago, Josh, I'm really hoping that Justin Ollen does come into that left centre position, which will then switch Adam to right centre. 
um, uh, playing alongside Charlie Staines on the right wing. And and mm. I'll, I'll be straight up, if Olam plays, I think we win. If Olam doesn't play, I think we lose. But I think it's mm. going to be a really tight game. Uh, so we'll just see how how that all goes. Uh, but look, love, love the look of the starting pack. Uh, happy for Heath Mason to be on the bench. He's got, um, you know, he's got some versatility there and he can play a number of positions. So, uh, look, I think it's a good team. I think we're going to have a wet track, as as I mentioned Monday night, even though we've had a couple of sunny days with, with only rain at night. I still think it's going to be damp conditions, greasy conditions. And you'll mm. probably touch on it later, Josh, but we've got a pretty decent record against the Storm at Leichhardt. So mm-hmm. look, looking yep. forward to the game. And, and I, look, I, I never thought we were going to match up against the Roosters. Uh, you know, the Storm are very match tough and they're winning ugly every week. They're not, they really aren't blowing any teams away and they're struggling to win. So that's probably mm-hmm. a good sign for them. But but I, I think we can take them. So we'll just, you know, hope, hopefully we get a good crowd out there, whether it's raining or not. And uh, the boys put on a really good show. Uh, Charlie Staines, I saw, got a lot of flack uh, him being returning to the starting side. I think he gets a lot of flack purely based that he's not super tall, like Lob City or other wingers. But I don't know. I saw saw him play in Cup last week, and he just looks he looks way better than the guys in Cup. I think our fans really underrate him. I think he's a very solid um, winger. Like he defensively, he's really good. And in terms of the high ball, I can't remember off the top of my head of him look going against the storm might I might eat my words with this because I got two wingers that can uh take a few speckies to use a Melbourne term but as I don't know Charlie Staines I think is better than the fan base give him credit for a lot of people will spew on that he's back in first grade this week but I think he I don't know he's safe he's safe Charlie he he, he gets the job done very rarely do I think that um, yeah, that he does doesn't look right out there, and he he, he works hard as well. I will I will say the one thing he has going for him right now is he's a right sight better than Brent Naden out there. Um, and I'd much prefer Low Charlie out there yeah. than Brent Naden. So I do think Charlie has slept on a little bit in that regard. He like you said, he's very safe. Um, he's good with the high ball. Probably not to like to level of a fullback, but um, as a winger, I think he does the job there. He's got a good finishing ability. Uh, defensive, he's, he's a little bit of a worry, but as are Brent Naden and a lot of the other players in, in um, our squad. But yeah, I've, I'm looking forward to him having a go. Um, like you alluded to, the Storm have t- two very good wingers. So he's going to have his work cut out for him, whichever one he's marking up against, but we'll have to see. Oh, don't yeah, don't forget, Coates is out, guys. Xavier Coates is out. So he what, Oh, is he? Yeah. He'll be yes. marking the new... Yeah, Coates, Coates did his hamstring last week. He's out for a few weeks. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, but sweet. I mean, Charlie's wholehearted, guys. I mean, I don't think he's the ideal winger that the West Tigers want and the, the coaching staff wants, but the, the guy can play a number of positions too. He, mm. He'd make a good feeling at fullback. Um, he's just not elite, but, you know, having watched him live, especially a couple of weeks ago at Campbelltown, I, I was in awe of how hard he was taking the hit-ups. Like, yep. his hit-ups were really strong. He, he gives his everything and, you know, okay, he might not be the best player in the world, but I can't knock a bloke that gives it his all every week and that's what he's done, you know, since he's been a West Tiger. I don't know if you guys heard the behind the raw with Lockie. Uh, who was Lockie with? Talon. Uh, Talon and I'm trying to think because they had two... Two might, sorts. might have been Jordan Miller or something. Or Heath no, Mason, Luke. maybe. Because they did two, th- two groups of three. I'm trying to think who the three were. But anyway, they were talking about uh, they had no idea. They were, they were doing a trivia question. And they asked about the sevens. They'd never heard of the sevens. They're like, what the fuck is the sevens? Um, <laughs> yeah, they had no idea that West Tigers won the sevens in 2004. But they were talking off the cuff. was just saying, oh, who would you pick if we had to make a seven side? And Charlie Staines was basically the first one picked by them. They're like, oh, we need speed. Charlie Staines is definitely, um, they said Dream and Charlie are basically the two go-to guys there. So in terms of training and stuff, he's, yeah, he's got the, the athletic ability and the players really rate him. So I think, I don't know, it'll take one Adam Dwayne style runaway intercept and maybe the fans will fall in love with him again. Maybe we, we just need that... Um, a Charlie Staines moment or something to get the fan base on side. But uh, it's the same with Adam. I mean, speaking of Adam Dwayne here, again, there's people, I mentioned this on Monday's side, people also 
bagging him out saying he didn't play well on the weekend. But I thought, Rob, you gave him the three points and your three, two, one. I thought, uh, statistically, he was the number one meter eater. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about. I mean, I guess I'm only taking, there's thousands of West Tigers fans out there and maybe it's only the three I noticed on Twitter. And you always, the complaints are always louder than the, the compliments, I guess, Rob. Look, everyone's frustrated and, you know, they, they want everyone to be at their best every week. I think our expectations are not very real. Uh, even, you know, I, I don't know if you're mentioning this at all, Josh, but there was an article by, I'm not sure of her surname, but Fatima, someone or other from the Daily Telegraph, saying that our yeah. our experienced players have, have let, you know, the side down. And, okay, like maybe last week, I think Appy and... And Aiden certainly could have set a better tone, especially with the last tackle options. But if you, I mean, Aaron, you might be able to help me out here. I'm pretty sure there'd be only about four, possibly five blokes at the most, but I'd, I'll I'll stick it safe with four that have had over 100 first grade games. Like maybe mm-hmm. Bateman, Coruscant, Caesar, Clemmer. I can't Steph. think of anyone else. Right? I, no, no. Steph, they, Steph hasn't Steph cracked 100 yet, has he? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I mean, we've got four blokes there that have probably played over 100 games. And don't get me wrong, some of those have played to, closer to 200 games. But mm. the rest of the guys are, are sort of, some are hovering between 50 and 100. And most mm. of them are hovering under 25 games. So yeah. whether they're letting the side down or not, like you're expecting too much of those players. If they all play at their best, you still need the other eight guys on the field, nine guys, who, how many there are left, to be, you know, of reasonable standard. And it's it's just hard to to compete at NRL level with so much inexperience. And we, we just have to be realists. It doesn't matter if you're a, a superstar kid like Lockie. Lockie still needs time. He's going to have a, a magnificent game like he did against, uh, who was it the other week, Canberra. Raiders. And, mm. and, and, then he'll, and then he'll put, you know, a couple of grubber kicks to go dead in goal the next week. And and that's mm. just part of his learning curve. And, and I don't get frustrated when I see that because I think the bloke's young, he's in his first season. I, you can't expect someone to just come into first grade and just, you know, snap, mm. snap their fingers and they're just ready-made. It doesn't always work like that. So I think we just have to be a little bit more realistic on, on everything. And yeah. like I said, I, I'd love a lot of our younger guys, given the season's over, there's roughly, you know, something around 10 games left with a bye. So they get nine games. Just give them as much game time as they can. Just, just keep mixing it up. Just manage the workload. If, you know, one forward's playing 70 minutes one week, put him on the bench next week or, or give him a rest, get someone else in from New South Wales Cup. Just give everyone a bit of a go and and just build for next year and just get some more game time for everyone. As Johnny Bateman back in the starting side, came off the bench last week, Ruben Porter is the man that gets dropped there. Uh, I saw a few people saying that Ruben Porter's been a bit ripped off here. So Ruben Porter's on, I think he was on a training trial and then Johnny Bateman's on yeah, on pretty good coin, but yet people I know money's and everything and Porter credit to him, he came in and did a job, but yeah, Johnny Bateman I think deserves after a game back last week, yeah I think he deserves a starting side You're on mute as yeah, for sure. I think I think we always need to have our uh, stronger players starting. Obviously, John's got a lot more experience than Ruben, um, and that kind of works in his favour. Uh, and it's really hard to put Ruben in, especially over someone like Samuel Afenu, who's having an absolutely stellar season for us, mm. probably one of the signings of the year across the entire comp, despite our lowly ladder position. Um, it is It is a little hard for him. Obviously, I do feel like he has been a little bit hard done by, but... With John back, um, and yes, yeah, Samuel are doing well. It, it's unfortunate, but he does seem to be the one who just barely misses out there. Safarth has been in the team for a little bit longer, so he's got a little bit more experience um, working with a lot of the players, and he adds a lot of good value off the bench. But yeah, Ruben being 18th man obviously doesn't mean he's going to be playing, but means he could get it. He could have a chance to play. Uh, Rob Heath Mason back on to the bench. How do you think Benji's going to use him? I just think Benji will use him when and if he needs to use him. I, I mean, he came on quite late against the Titans, uh, and I think uh, he didn't get to play against the Raiders. So I just think it'll just be a matter of whether injury or, or you know, someone feeling fatigued, uh, that'll determine if he comes on or not. But I, I wouldn't expect him on 
uh, till late in the game. And, and just to touch on Ruben Porter, I think, look, I mean, I don't think he's dropped because of form. I think his stats, especially against the Roosters, were really good in the first half. But mm-hmm. you've got now Bateman and Fainu that are 80-minute players. So there's mm-hmm. just no need for another edge player. Uh, you know, everyone else can cover the middle. And, and you know, he's there as 18th man, most likely, if something happens to one of those back rowers. But um, Heath, Heath Mason, again, he'll just get a little bit of utility time. Uh, and, you know, hopefully Buller doesn't go down or Appy doesn't go down or one of our halves doesn't go down. But I know he can do a job if he gets to play in any of those positions. Uh, right home. Moving on to the Storm of Melbourne. As run us through the Storm squad. I just need to double check before this one, Josh. Are you sure your heart's able to handle this one? Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, I'll get the harp noise ready. <laughs> okay, fullback returning to their team again. Ryan Pappenhausen, Will Warbrick and Kane Bradley are the wingers with Grant Anderson and Jack Howarth in the centres. Tyron Wishart and Jerome Hughes are the halves. Tui Kamikamitha and Josh King are the front rowers with Bronson Garlic at hooker. Sean Bloor and Eliesa Katoa are the second rowers with Trent Liero at uh, lock. Suolavi, Falongo, Christian Welch, Nelson Asofa Solomona and Joe Chan are the bench. Remus Smith is 18th man. Alec McDonald, Dean Eremaya, Chris Lewis and Lazarus Valepu are the reserves. Uh, Rob, where do you want to go first? Ryan Pappenhausen had a week off last week, I believe, for injury. He's back at full back. Do you think he's going to be pretty dangerous playing back at his junior, I guess his junior club? Uh, he, he's always dangerous, guys, especially from kicks from the Melbourne specialty move where they have him, you know, coming in from an out-in play. Uh, obviously, Farlongo is on the bench still, so they've got coverage for that. And that Farlongo has got the most amazing footwork. Uh, so they're, they're they're blessed to have two talented fullbacks like that. Uh, look, surprisingly, obviously, you know, we'll talk about your your favourite, Josh, and mm. I think the back the back rowers for the Storm are, are a big danger. Um, Jerome Hughes is in magnificent form. We're, we've got to watch. You know, he can do so much on that right side. He he can pass short. He can pass long. He'll shape to kick. He'll step off the right foot. He's got so many moves to his game. But the guy that's interesting this week for me, and he's been a sleeping giant, is Asafa Solomona. He's hardly got game time for literally two months. Been Mm -hmm. in and out out of the squad. And then last week I watched his game, and I think he had something ridiculous like 16 hit-ups in 30 minutes. So he obviously he's trying to make a point. He doesn't want to be shipped out of Melbourne, and he wants to stay a Melbourne Storm. So I really think we're going to have our hands full with uh, Big Nelson this week. So he's one to watch. But, you know, we are lucky that they're still missing Munster. They're still missing Harry Grant. Uh, Mm. They they don't have both centres, Remus Smith, Nick Meaney. They lost Xavier Coast last week. They've got a ton of outs. We've Mm. got a damn good pack. You know, I I like – I know Aiden Caesar missed some tackles last week, but I I like our halves combination. If Buller plays – I, I think we've got a really solid team and I think we can put it to them. So, But look, they, they're they just more match hard and, and they, they play better than us. They understand their game better than us. Every player knows their role and we just have to be just as good as them this week. And for some reason, Leichhardt's brought the best out of us this year, so I'm really hoping we can go three for three there. Uh, so, of course, the beautiful man that's coming back to play against his old club as, uh, of course, talking about Kane Bradley. What are your thoughts on him? I honestly haven't seen too much of Kane since he left the Tigers. Um, it's it's a tricky one. I think they've moved him to that side. Uh, well, I actually don't know what side of the field he plays on, but um, he was... Warbrick's was right, he, so I'd say... Was he left. a Balmain junior? Yeah, War, Warbrick's the right centre, right, right winger, so he'll be on yeah. the left. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but just quickly, this would be Ryan Pappenhausen's first game at Leichhardt since he left the Tigers, wouldn't it? I don't think he's played against us there yet. Uh, let me... I can't remember the last time we played them at Leichhardt. I've got that. Uh, I've got the stats for that. I'll see if I can find... 2018, I think, maybe. Let me see if I can bring up... Um, keep talking. I'll bring up Ryan Pappenhausen's. See if I can find that stat. But yeah, keep going, Naz. Yeah, so I'm just looking a little bit more at the rest of their team, Grant Anderson in the centres is a bit of an interesting one to me. He seems to be more of a winger. Um, don't know how he's going to go in the centres. Maybe that could be something we could exploit. Uh, Tyron Wishard's been filling in quite well for um, 
Cameron Munster as well. And like Rob said, uh, no Harry Grant still is a big out for them. Um, just briefly on Sean Bloor, I, I do like how uh, the NRL Twitter account posted that um, comparison of Sean and Sam Weller, who Josh was saying might become his new favourite at the Tigers, but he didn't want to maybe, be a li- he wanted to be a little bit uh, coy about it, I guess. And mm. <laughs> it just so that. happens that the ex Tiger who was um, Josh's favourite and the current Tiger who could become Josh's favourite were were the comparison. I, I did enjoy that. Um, look, moving to their bench, Suolavi Falongo adds a lot of impact. I think he can fill in any position in the in the backs, which is important for a team like the Storm if they do have something go wrong. He's also incredibly fast, but I think Ryan Pappenhausen is probably still the fastest player on their team. Christian Well, she's a workhorse. Like, There's a lot in this team um, that are basically a well-oiled machine. But in, in saying that, they might be top of the ladder by two wins at this point, but they're not winning comfortably. They they seem to be in a habit of winning ugly. They haven't had a lot of really solid wins this year, and even some of their really solid wins, like the Anzac Knight game against the Rabbits, they really let the Rabbits back into it. Um, they scored a bunch of points against them. I think it was like a fifty-two to twenty-two or something along those lines. Like they've just they've just been in that habit of winning ugly and. Maybe coming up against us at Leichhardt, which is where we've been playing our best footy for the most part so far this year, could be the place where we might be able to get the job done against them. So this is only the third game for Pappenhausen against the West Tigers. Uh, he's only played them once at home and once at Combank. So yeah, he's never played Leichhardt. It's only his third time playing against us, which is pretty... I mean, he's obviously suffered a lot of injuries in his career, but I feel like he's been around... Uh, quite a while. Right. The fact that it's a third time he's played against his junior club, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's it's a. I, I wouldn't have realised if he hadn't played at Leichhardt against us before. Mm. Uh, Slate Batty said, "Balls copping a boo and don't boo him. Don't. We're not. We're yeah, not. I. I we're don't. Not agree assholes with that. like Parramatta fans. I don't. Agree don't, with that. don't boo him. He. He. He wanted to stay. He wanted to stay. And then old mate, that's." Fucked off back to Manly, told him he didn't have a contract, and he met with Bellamy when they were in Newcastle. And yeah, he took took the opportunity down Melbourne. It wasn't his fault. He really wanted to stay. Um, he could have been there. And then yeah, dickhead, old mate. Um, what's his name? Uh, Fulton. He, he fucked that up. So boo him. Boo Manly. Boo him when Manly yeah. come play. Save, save the save the boos for when one Luke Brooks gets back to Leichhardt and. About six or seven weeks' time or so. Yeah, yeah. Sean doesn't deserve the booze. He, like Josh said, he wanted to stay. He wanted to be one of those players who turns the club around. And I, I full credit to Sean um, the way he handled things. Obviously, it wasn't what he wanted, but he's absolutely killing it down there for the Storm now. Yeah, be happy, be happy for him. Like we, we can't keep him all. We got and it was in a swap as well. Like of all, like if a player just is doing a Stefano and like talks his way in. F's off and abandons ship. It was in a trade deal as well. So we got Olam in return, um, who uh, apparently uh, was hanging... Before Olam came to the West Tigers, he actually showed Sean around Melbourne and helped him out as well. So they actually, funny enough, became yeah quite close and hung out together before um, going their separate ways to the opposite club. So, yeah, don't... I'll I'll boo you. If you boo Sean, uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take some knuckle dusters or something. I'll, I'll fight you if you're in the Latcham stand and you boo. I'll, Sean like, I'll likely be out. sitting up there next to you, Josh. And if yeah. there's any boos when Sean gets the ball, I'll get first look at how your how you handle the situation. Yeah, I'll, I'll cut you. I'll put a knife in your <laughs> shoe or something. Um, what side will he be? Who's who will he be against? Johnny or Samuela? He'll be against Sam, Johnny. No, Sam's been on the left. Uh, like I know they both play left, but mm. surely Sam's not going to switch to the right. He's been okay. he's been such a weapon all year. Surely Johnny goes back to his natural right side. Surely that means he'll play left, won't it? <laughs> sure. So who's he going to go against? But oh, I, I think Johnny Bateman should be against up against Sean Bloor. Like mm. if I, I don't I don't see Benji changing Sam Weller as he's been playing on the left. Literally all year since he got concussed against the Dolphins, 
I, I think he's been on the left in every game that he started, that he came back. Uh, and they're, it's two guys that are known to uh, ruffle some feathers and, yeah, get to uh, yeah get close close to their opposition players. So what are the what are the odds that there's a bit of a shirt front between Johnny and Sean in this one? Former Sean former won't start anything. Sean, uh, Sean, Sean never trail. starts him. He never starts yeah. him. He just he yeah. just he seems to. Like, we, all, we, all, we all remember Nathan Brown um, exactly. getting his ass handed in, in to his him. Debut. He, it was his debut yeah. as well for Sean. Like uh, the, I can't remember what game it was. The Storm. Like Sean was just literally laughing at a, in a guy's face that was getting in him. I'm trying to think who it was a couple of weeks ago, but it was hilarious. He doesn't start him. He just plays hard and then it annoys the opposition. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but uh, it might be friendly banter between the two. I don't think there's any bad blood between Sean you're, and his former teammates. So you're absolutely dreaming if you think the storm aren't going to run out on the field and that there's not going to be booze everywhere. It doesn't mean they're for, for Sean. Yeah, it's I know. Just, well, it's just I know. Like, I don't yeah, think of course. Uh, well, nothing more about personal, Sean. Maybe well, they don't really read the name. First, Larry, and they um. Yeah, and, and he gets booed then potentially. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I won't be doing that. I have got too yeah. much respect. Like. Yeah, I didn't, I don't know. I don't. I hope not. I hope not. You got to. Be... You got to respect the players who want to be there to turn the club around, even if they don't end up being there, because it's not. It's not always on the players. It's often on their man, the players' manager, or the the current coaching, or the mm. staff at the club who were responsible for the decision. What players do we boo? What what players are okay to boo? We boo Moses. He's probably number one yeah. for us. People still do. People boo Teddy. Still? I don't. I, I don't. I think I think some yeah. probably still do. Um, Brooks is absolutely going to cop it when we play. Mm. When he comes back later in the year. I think um, Matt would cop it. Matt Wood, yeah. Aaron Woods did for a while, but he yeah, maybe half the manly team. Anymore, and I think that probably yeah. has died off. I don't know. I hope Woodsy. Manly as I well. hope Woodsy yeah. gets picked first grade when we play Manly later. Um, right. Speaking of Storm, people running out. We've got uh, our Storm man himself, Gobbs. How are you? Welcome back to the West Life podcast. We're just talking about your team and if we're going to. Yeah, how much booing there will be for uh, for your side running out and Leichhardt. And, um, but, yeah, welcome back to the West Life podcast, buddy. Thank you, gentlemen, and um, good evening, everyone. And to answer your question, there'll be plenty, plenty of booing. <laughs> Are you heading out to Leichhardt? Because you live out Campbelltown way, don't you? So a bit of a trek. Very good memory. Um, no, I live at Oran Park in Camden, um, mm. so in the Greater MacArthur area. Yep. Um, yes, I will be out there. Oran Park. I wish, I wish it was still a racetrack. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on yeah the matchup on uh, what day is it? Saturday. What are your thoughts? And yeah, you got a few outs in this game. Yeah, um, problematic time of year. I think every team uh, right across the board is affected during this time of year, uh, which obviously coincides with Origin. Um, so if anything, I think this brings both teams closer together. Um, the weather will probably play a role in that as well. I think there's some wet weather that is going to be um, uh, forecasted for for the clash. But um, mm. just on just on two lineups themselves, um, the return of Ryan Pappenhausen uh, again uh, is a good thing for the Melbourne Storm. Uh, considering mm. last week they only had one of their first choice spine members with Jerome Hughes, everyone else was a depth player in those positions. Uh, and whilst you've got the luxury of the uh, um, the diminutive and enigmatic uh, Saw Fialongo, he's no Brian Pappenhausen. He's still very raw, he's still very green, uh, and he's, he's got uh, some, uh, shall we say, fragilities in his game, which uh, will only come um, uh, with time as he gets more NRL experience. So um, on the basis of looking at the 1-17 to of how the Storm currently sit, I expect there will be some changes. I don't envisage to see Kane Bradley starting on a wing, uh, primarily mm. because over the past 18 months he's been playing in the back row in the feeder system for the Melbourne Storm. Um, mm. He started the year as an edge back rower as well. Um, and even when he did come onto the field last week, he did play second row. So um, I do envisage that there will be a change uh, to the 17 as it currently looks. 
um, that potentially could come in the form of Sua Falongo going straight onto the wing. But right. Bellamy, Bellamy might um, want to see uh, him remain on the bench and have that X factor, which means that Dean Iremia, who is ex- who's named in the extended reserves, may come may come onto the wing and play his second NRL game for the season. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. You said mentioned Ryan Pappenhausen having lots of comebacks. It's quite ironic that he's got hair like a young Johnny Farnham too. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rob. Well, anything? Some interesting, yeah, revelations there from Gobbs there. Oh, well, it makes a lot of sense because, uh, as you know, Gobbs alluded to, Aramia played what I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, Gobbs, but he played against New Zealand a few weeks ago. He did, uh, and I think he got a try there as well. So that that seems a logical choice. But I've never known Bellamy to sort of be one of those guys to you know, play Ducks and Drakes with the naming of the team. Like, I just thought he would have named him straight there because it was probably the obvious choice. So I don't know what the, what the reasoning is behind it, but yeah, I'd be very surprised if it was just a, a, a sort of a ploy just to throw us off. Yeah, he's, um, he's quite actually well known for uh, having, uh, throwing up many smoke screens. So very, very often you'll see that the 1-17 to isn't the 1-17 to that runs out. And it may be it may be a subtle change. It may be only one or two. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not like the old Brian Smith named seventeen and run out a different seventeen. Um, yeah, the way he used to do it. But um, no, the um, yeah, but Bellamy's quite well known. Very conservative. Goes on the uh, errs on the side of caution. Consults his medical team. Um, and so usually when all that is named on a Tuesday, a lot can transpire over a period of seventy two hours leading into a game. Um, so again, it, it wouldn't surprise me to see this team not run out as per program. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're expecting, you missed, I don't think you heard us talk about it before. We're probably expecting maybe Olam to come in for us. So yeah, we'll have to see, uh, I guess 24 hours out from the game. So that puts out Friday evening to see, um, yeah, if the teams do make some changes talking about my, uh, man crush Sean Bloor trying to work out what because we've got Johnny Bateman back on an edge this mm-hmm. week. And we're trying, and then he and Sione Fainu, uh, are both Sione, sorry, Samuel Fainu are both, yeah, play on the same edge. We're trying to work out who Sean will go against. Any, um, any preference for you? Not really. Um, Sean plays primarily on the left. So mm. depending on who is going to line up, I'm assuming that's going to be Bateman because I think uh, Fainu... We're trying to work that out, yeah. Yeah, I think Fainu's primarily been playing on the left from what I've seen of the West Tigers games this season. Mm. Uh, so that would... I'd assume that Brawl will be up against uh, Bateman in that regard. Mm. Uh, in saying that too, Bateman, as we know, is very unorthodox, doesn't play your traditional line-running edge back row, loves to bob across field... Uh, and cause that sort of chaos in terms of pulling edge defence apart. So that's one thing that um, the Storm have always struggled with, even when he was playing with the Raiders, where he has that t- has that um, propensity to sort of cut back in field and go out of his system, and that sort of throws off your opposition defence. Um, and then all of a sudden that causes a bit of havoc and panic in and around the ruck area. Oh, no, we lost. Uh, inward. Oh, and it sort of leads to uh, How has the fan base taken to Sean Gobbs? Are you guys looking after him? You treating him well? We are. We are. We are, Josh. We're, we're looking after Good. your boy. Um, okay. He's enjoying life down in Melbourne. I know, mm. I know his uh, his partner. I know this might be a sore point for you. Uh, his yeah, partner, Bianca. Yeah. She's, uh, she's enjoying. Yeah, she's enjoying yeah, she's the storm. Great. Uh, Shouts, and, Bianca. In Melbourne. Melbourne. Absolutely. Obviously struggled in the preseason. Um, really, really struggled with the the workload and the volume that the Storm were doing. He wasn't used to that, um, but he's really adapted and really built uh, built his game as uh, as the season's gone on. Yeah, the rig's looking fantastic. Uh, I quite liked that most of the shots um, of the preseason. Sean didn't have a shirt on, not only because obviously it's nice to look at, but obviously. <laughs> Seeing him not wear purple, just avoiding him seeing him in purple <laughs> is also a plus. 
Uh, boys, any questions for? Uh, I like how you got Stormy Daniel as your uh, as your username there. Very uh, very apt <laughs> as, we, as we head into U.S. election. Yes, time. Yes, we are. That's exactly right. I thought I would, thought I'd go with that theme. Yeah, nice. Uh, any questions for Gobs, guys? Or anyone in the uh, comments got a question for Gobs? I'll throw one up while someone can come up with another question. So, like, just seeing as Sean Bloor is um, Josh's favourite subject, mate, uh, what, has he exceeded your expectations this year? Subject, he's a person. Uh, Bloor. He's the person, but it's the subject of the person. You're right. <laughs> As in, like, did you, did you expect him to cement a first grade spot and you know be one of the leading offloaders in the NRL and and all this? Like the way he's playing is fantastic. Yeah, I did, um, Rob. I watched him come through the Panthers uh, junior system, um, and he was always destined for first grade. Right? Yep. Um, it was just a matter of where was he going to fit in that sort of that that Pen- Penrith system. Um, obviously, got his opportunity at West Tigers and. Unfortunately, injury really crippled him, and mm. we didn't probably get to see the the, the talent sort of um, uh, fulfilled at West Tigers. But nice he's uh, he's um, he's come to the storm, and he's he's living up to every bit of that. Um, I suppose um, that prospect of of that ability and the talent that everyone had sort of foreseen as he was coming through as a as a as a junior prodigy. I actually anticipated that he would be used primarily as a middle forward, just purely the fact that he's got impact and leg speed, which is something that the Storm have highlighted is an area of weakness at the moment that they're still trying to fill a void. Um, mm. But for whatever reason, they've just decided to use him primarily as a, a, an L4, a left-edge back rower, and um, he's, he's, made, he's made that position his own. Uh, mm. And he's continued to improve week in, week out. I suppose individually... Yes, but he's had a lot. I suppose the other the other thing too that you've got to be aware of is that he hasn't had he hasn't really had time to build uh, a strong combination with Cameron Munster. Yeah, um, because Munster's obviously been out. But the games that they did play together, they looked very very dynamic and very dangerous. Mm. Uh, so I'd love to see the amount of repetitions that they are doing in training. Obviously, Wishart is primarily filling in that role at the moment um, and all of those sort of opportunities that when he is getting into um, open space, broken field, uh, scoring tries close to the line, it's it's coming off the back of of him rather than him being put in situations to, to be able to penetrate the line. Um, yeah. So I think you'll see... I think you'll see Bloor's game to go to a whole new level when Munster does return. Yeah, definitely great penetration. Uh, Righto, stats man, what what have you got for us this week? <laughs> Very nice, Josh. Okay, so I don't have too much this week. I was kind of having a look through the stats on NRL.com to see where we shape up in regards to the, to the storm, where we might have a little bit of an advantage or something in our game that we can do fairly well um, compared to them. On, honestly, there's not a lot. Obviously, storm atop of the table, we're bottom of it. Our offloads, though, uh, we've played the same amount of games. Both had two buys. Um, we've offloaded 158 times to the Storm's 152. We are fourth and they are fifth. So that's probably one of the main ones there that we are going to have to probably try and stop them um, is the offload game. And our conversion percentage so far this year has actually been um, pretty good, I'd say. I think, yeah, here we are. So we are at 81% success rate for our conversions the storm are at 79 and we are sixth and they are seventh so there's a little bit there where we're pretty neck and neck but we've got a slight advantage and this game is our chance to go four in a row at leichhardt for the first time since we won seven games between 2009 and 2011 so we won seven in a row at Leichhardt, including a win there against the Storm. Mm. Um, we've gone three in a row since then a few times. In 2013, we won three in a row. Uh, 2017, we won our last two there and our first one in 2018. Uh, and obviously, we're on three in a row now. So it would mm. be nice to go four in a row at Leichhardt for the first time mm. in quite some time. Yeah, and the last time 
Yeah, 2015. We haven't beat the Storm in Sydney since 2015. Uh, and I do have the team list brought up there. So that that was the Teddy, uh, Mitch Moses, Brooks. Yeah, threesome uh, in the uh, the core there. Uh, and Woodsy as well. So we still have the big four. I think it was Ivan was coach back then. We were, for those um, trying to picture it, they're wearing the silver Iron, not Iron Man, the silver dude. What's the silver marble jersey that we had? Someone might tell me. I don't like comic book movies. Uh, I had the jersey. I got no fucking clue what he's called. We had we had a Rocket Raccoon one, but I forget. Yeah, that was after that. Was. Yeah, it's yeah. the the silver version of Iron Man, whatever his name is. Uh, Paddy silver Richards. Surfer? Yeah, or maybe I don't know. Silver Fox. Five out of six uh, that night from Paddy Richards and a try, so fourteen points. Uh, Paddy Richards, and then the Storm had quite the side. So Munster was at fullback. Cora Beatty scored a double on the wing. Will Chambers and Tohu Harris in the centers. Uh, Matt Duffy on the wing. Where is Matt Duffy now? He's in England, isn't he? Um, Blake Green and Cooper Cronk, the halves. Jesse Bromwich, Felice Kafusi, front row. Cameron Smith at hooker. You might remember him. Uh, Kevin Thanks. Proctor, Kenny Bromwich, back row. Uh, Funakane at lock, uh, and then Glasby, Hinchcliffe, our old mate Mahe Fanua, and Christian Welch on the bench. Hell of a side. I would argue that side is better than the side um, running out for the storm on Saturday. Like, you've got a few, uh, a couple of goats in there, and then a young West Tiger side, yeah, carved them up that night. Not sure what your memories are of. That night, Gobs, were you at Leichhardt Oval that night? I was. I was. And uh, Matt Duffy you uh, refer to is not the, the Matt Duffy from the Dragons. It's a different Matt uh... Duffy. Uh, he's currently the uh, the academy coach at the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, so there you he, go. He was a, uh, he was a New Zealander uh, who played for the Auckland Blues as well. Um, so he's, uh, oh. he's a cross-code, cross-coder. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh... I was trying to make a, a duff beer joke, but I couldn't think of one. Um, you duff boys, it. were you, were you <laughs> nice? Were you there that night, Roberto? Or as I can't, re- I can't remember. I'll be honest, I can't remember. I probably was, but I actually can't remember. I think I um, was. I do remember seeing this game on TV, um, and I vividly rem- and I vaguely remember it because of the the Marvel jersey thing that we had mm. that weekend. Um, so I do vaguely remember this game. Not a, not in great detail, though. Uh, Stephen said, we don't serve Duff. I was going to I was going to say this. We don't serve Duff. We're going to serve FUD. Um, <laughs> can, I have a cl- can I have a clean glass? Well, here you go, Your Majesty. Right, Rob Shadamas, what have you got? Anything for us at this point of the week? Or should we put something out on the socials? So... Uh, of course, we like to bet with Chase Bet. Head to westtigers.com.au and yeah, sign up to Chase Bet if you haven't already through that link and then send them a little DM. Uh, what's gambling really costing you for free and confidential support? Call 1 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. So I, have, this week. I have a double digit pony for you on Saturday at Randwick, provided the races mm-hmm. go ahead. It's in race three, and it's called the Extreme Cat. Uh, I don't know what price it is on Chase Bet because I would say they wouldn't have their fixed bet odds out yet. It'd just be sort of tote only at the moment. But I would say you'll get somewhere between ten and twelve to one each way, and I think it's a really good shout this week. So the Extreme Cat, Randwick race three. Extreme Cat, just like. Uh trying to think of a storm player who's the extreme cat of the the melbourne storm i'm trying to think extreme. Who's oh. a, who who would just more likely to say who's the who's more likely to get caught probably um solomona i'll call solomona come at me what are you gonna do <laughs> squash me um Righto, thanks, Rob, Rob Shadamas. Look forward to Saturday. I don't think the rain's meant to... I don't think there's meant to be that much rain in Sydney on Saturday. I think it should be all right. It might be a heavy track, but... Um, the heavier, the I better. Right. Yeah. Uh, as a, I think I think the, the heavier will definitely see the game go into um, more of an arm wrestle. 
we'll talk about horse racing, but yeah, that too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right on to the other games. Full back to eight games. When was the last time we had eight games in a round? As it's got to be a few weeks. Three weeks ago, yeah. Um, yeah. The origin period, they it's the weeks that are mostly affected where all the players are out is five games. The week after is seven. And then the week before teams get selected for the following game is the full eight. So mm. after this week, there'll be another fiver, then another seven, and then eights for the rest of the year. Uh, righto. Pa- uh, I've gone the, Paramount, the filthy Paramount Eels. Don't feel good about it, but... Don't like the Rabbitohs either. I don't know. They're at home. Moses is playing. I've gone Eels in this one, even though they're underdogs and the Bunnies are running hot. Uh, As and Rob have gone the favourites in the Rabbitohs. So, yeah, I don't know. Parrot, I've gone the home team in this one. Boys, either you got a theory for the Rabbitohs? I've got one theory, guys. I could I could make a case for seven of these games going to Golden Point this week. So mm. it's literally, literally a coin flip. If you ask someone who knew nothing about rugby league, they're probably more of a chance of getting more right this weekend than, than any of us. So uh, really, really hard game to pick. I was a little bit concerned that apparently Mitch Moses went off in the dressing room uh, at his players last week after the game with their loss against Newcastle. So I'm sure Parra are going to be pretty fired up. Moses is in great form, but... I just think South have got a bit more to play for. I think I think Paris season's done after that loss last week, but yeah, I, I would sure. I would not be every game I've tipped. I have tipped literally with zero confidence. Mm. I think uh, also I think also Robbie, you, you look at that South Sydney team and they're starting to get all their personnel back as well. Mm. Yeah, they are. Like it's their forwards that have been the letdown all year. Like yeah. they and having Cam Murray go back, just you know, like just those extra quick just play the balls and a little bit more go forward. Cookie's in great form. Like, there's an argument that Cookie could have been on the bench for Origin, backing up Appy, but somehow we went with Reese Robson, who didn't do a bad job in game two. Uh, yeah, look, they, they got some players coming into form, and, and Latrell's finding his feet again. So hard to beat. But I mean, I, I like I, I look. I keep looking at Parramatta's pack, and then the fact they got Guffo and Mitch Moses and a, and a bit of strike out wide. I just mm. think how are these blokes coming almost last? It's crazy. Mm. Uh, we've all gone the Sharkies up against the Titans at home as can, um, yeah, Sharkies quite, quite heavy favorites in this one. I'd say this is actually closer to a home game for the Titans considering it's at Coffs Harbour and I think that oh, is, is much it? closer. Okay. Yeah, it, right. I think that's much closer to the Gold Coast than it is to about, Cronulla. About halfway, I reckon. It's half Maybe, somewhere around there. Yeah, about um, half, half. I'd be expecting a bit of a bounce back from the Sharks this week. They're not in great form, um, losing to the Bulldogs last week. Mm. In Golden Point, will definitely have stung. Um, yeah, I think they'll bounce back. Titans are going all right. Uh, still dealing with some injuries, but I, I think the Sharks have a little bit more to play for at this point in time too. Yeah, I wonder if they'll go the big banana while they're there. Uh, I've gone Broncos. Rob's gone Broncos, but as you've gone Pampers. Uh, who are the favourites? But Rob and I are tipping the upset with the Broncos at home. Yeah, this one is really tricky. Obviously, the Broncos are probably going to want to make a bit of a statement, but they just seem to be in too strange form at the moment. They haven't won a single game during the origin period. The only points they've gotten are from their two buys. As a result, they've slipped out of the top eight. There's still no Adam Reynolds, and I just think the Panthers mm. have a little bit more consistency. Obviously, their origin players are all back. Um, Isaiah Yo was the only origin player for them that played last week, and he started off the bench, and he's back in the starting side as well. I'm expecting this one could potentially be a little bit of a blowout in the Panthers' favour. Yeah, all right, that confidence. Um, I don't know, Brisbane at home, they're trying to get their season back on track. That's my theory, Rob. Oh, look, they rested, what, Walsh, Carrigan, Haas last week. They're, they're desperate. Um, mm. they, they, have to, they have to find a win. I Again, I, I wanted to tip Penrith, but I, I know Luai's back this week and, and obviously uh, Dylan Edwards. But, again, they were so awful against the Cowboys. I, I don't know. Penrith have got a better pack, but it's just another coin flip, guys. And I can see why Penrith are favourites, but Br- Brisbane have to win. They're just... They're just mm. desperate. But again, it's the first three games that we've just looked at. I, I could have easily tipped the other three teams. It's just too hard this week. I wouldn't put would I wouldn't be putting a dollar on any of these games. Gobs, you've got a yeah, 
Broncos or Panthers? Oh, I, I tend to leave, lead towards the Panthers, but I, I do concur with your sentiments in terms of this is a game which could really be season-defining for the Broncos, and they're probably going to be desperate, um, especially, obviously, with the Origin um, game three leading up as well, so they'll want to try and get a win going into Origin, knowing that they're not they're not going to be without uh, their stars going into game three. So mm. uh, desperate times call for desperate measures, but um, I don't know. I just I just think the the professionalism of the Panthers just may may be too much with their defensive defensive resolve as well. So um, one to twelve Panthers. Uh, right, uh, Saturday afternoon as we make our way over to Leichhardt for the game after this, as we'll have to roll our windows up as we drive through Homebush because the Bulldogs are playing uh, against the Warriors at a core stadium at 3 o'clock. I've gone the Bulldogs, as has gone the Bulldogs. Rob, you've gone the Wars. Look, I a true story, the Warriors were going to be my Rob Stradamus hit this week. And then this morning I heard the very sad news that uh, the late Jeff Robinson passed away this morning. So uh, I just now think the Bulldogs are going to be revved up because Robbo was an amazing player for, for Canterbury back in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, ran the ball up like no one else. And the crowd used to roar. I, I used to get scared when I was at Belmore. Like as soon as he got the ball, it was just an almighty mm. roar. So... I kind of feel like they're going to have a lot to play for, but I'm loving I'm loving the Warriors when Samare Martin's a halfback. They just mm-hmm. seem to be a totally different team, and this is their season. They they have to win. I think you know the Bulldogs have just. I mean, they're playing really well. They've got a really good defensive line, but what I saw in the last 15, 20 minutes against Cronulla, Cronulla were putting holes in them up the middle, and I think New Zealand have got a really good forward pack, but. Like I say, now with the emotion of the occasion on Saturday, and I know they'll be doing a minute silence and a bit of a, you know, sort of a tribute to the family there. Uh, you know, it, it could be the other way around. So, uh, hence why I pulled back my my Waz special this week. But I, I okay. actually thought they, I thought they were going to win. They still might. Gobs, are you old enough to remember him playing against the Magpies? I am. My uh, my father used to take me to Belmore uh, Sports Ground. Uh, my family's born and bred in Belmore. So there I spent uh, a lot of my childhood at uh, Belmore and seeing the wild man who uh, I think was probably the first, uh, if not the first, one of the first that really uh, coined the phrase off the back fence. He was um, he was a terror charging into those uh, op- opposition offensive lines and who could forget um, him completely demolishing the Parramatta wall. Um, well, yeah, when he took out Sterling. Yeah, I think every yeah. rugby league fan took great delight in seeing that. So, yeah, no, Vale, uh, Vale, um, uh, Robbo. I'm going to be yeah, honest. I always, I always compare yeah. it to um, at Leichhardt Oval when Larry Cora got the ball. Yeah. Like, sitting in the grandstand, you could just see the hill rise yes. with anticipation and excitement. And as soon as Robbo got the ball and you knew, like, it didn't matter how many defenders were there were in the line, he was like a bowling ball coming down at a full rack of 10, of, of 10 pins at the end of the lane, and he didn't care who he skittled, and he generally knocked over that first defender. I, I've never seen a bloke run hard, harder at the line. He was just incredible. Yeah. And he, he wasn't the biggest bloke in the world. He was probably 5 oh. foot 11 or, or something like that, but he had the yeah. long hair, the big beard. He looked really intimidating, and, um, mm. yeah, he was just a character. And, and even if you didn't like it, everyone hated Canterbury. But you kind of everyone loved Robbo, you know, like yeah. he was just some sort of character. Yeah, he just had that cut through, didn't he, across all, all fan bases. Every, everyone yeah, just he loved did. He was he a did. cult, he was cult hero. hero. Yeah. Uh, RIP. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have no memory. I'm obviously not old enough to um, to remember him, but yeah. Robert and I are showing their age. Yeah, a little bit, but um, yeah, thoughts and love to his family, nonetheless, because he wasn't overly. Um, yeah, old either. So um, very sad. And yeah, obviously you guys, yeah, speak so highly of him. So um, I'll have to catch some highlights of him. Uh, yeah, as a, uh, we move on with the tips as uh, our game. So obviously, fuck it. I'm tipping the Tigers. Uh, I don't know. This is part bias, part my tips are going so shit. I don't give a shit anymore that I'm just going to. Um, throw it out there and go the boys. Actually, I think you tipped the storm as, and I put the tigers there. You might, I think you were a coward in this one. 
Um, <laughs> I've gone. We're coming to the three dollars eighteen. We were four dollars, so well, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. Leichhardt, get it? Do it, boys. Come on. I could could be wrong. Who cares? It's only tipping. Um, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? I bet. Uh, a, a tip wrong, but I don't know. As did you tip Tigers or Storm? I think I put Tigers there, but I think you did tip Storm. Yeah, in the in the picture I sent you, I did tip the Storm. I will say yeah. though, in my defence, it is double points at the Ermington Pub this week, and I'm like I'm pretty close to the bottom of the of we the can comp do in that there. one. So uh, I feel like I'm going the safe tip in that. I might change my tip to the Tigers a bit closer to the game for um, especially if. Like Rob said, if Justin Ollen plays, I think I may tip us because I think that puts it maybe a little bit more in our favor, only ever so slightly. But uh, yeah, like for at least for now, I'm going the safe bet with the Storm because I need the double points. <laughs> Gobs, how, how confident are you on Saturday? I'm worried. Um, I, I see these games as danger games, uh, even last week against the Raiders. Um, to me, I'm always more confident when uh, the storm come up against more of the the top tier teams because they have that sort of tendency to lift and stay in the game mentally. Um, these games are always a danger game in my opinion, um, especially with with obviously the the home ground advantage at Leichhardt. Um, it is an intimidating place to play for opposition teams. Um, and again, the outs of not having Harry Grant there specifically in and around the ruck and having to contend with the the scheming mastermind of uh, Api Corosel. I, I think mm. I think he'll definitely start to ask a lot of questions about the, the middle forwards uh, of the Storm. Uh, and if, if West Tigers are to win, I think that's probably the area that they've got the upper hand and the advantage in. Um, the, the West Tigers pack holds its own. Um, if anything, they've probably got more, more impotence, uh, more, more, um, more punch through the middle than what the Storm do. The Storm are so heavily reliant upon Nelson. Um, and as soon as he sort of goes off, the momentum actually goes with him due mm. to that fact they haven't got that sort of sustained leg power, leg speed uh, that can generate and keep that sort of momentum that he sort of generates. Um, to me, that's a, that's, a, that's a worry. That's a concern. So, um, And there's no point in having fine China in the back line if, if you're not going forward. Uh, I mean, that's Rugby League 101, right? So... To me, if, if West Tigers are to get the, the chocolates, uh, it'll be in and around the ruck area. And Rob, you said earlier, Olam, Olam in, going Tigers. Olam out, going Storm. Uh, Olam in, going Tigers. Uh, look, my, my I look at it slightly different to Gobs. I actually think we've got to defend the kick. I, I see them having a better aerial threat. I see them putting grubber kicks in, you know, for like lead runners and, and you know, diving on a, on a loose ball in the end goal. We've got to watch the Storm kicking game. I, I think we can match them in the forwards. I think if Olam's there, we can definitely sort of tackle their backs and, and handle their edges. But it's how we defend their kicking game. So expect guys like Appy to be charging out of the line, putting pressure on, on Munster, just like he did a couple of weeks earlier against um, the Titans and yes. the Raiders. So, so I, I just hope that's the case. But you know, Mel- Melbourne are just like I said earlier before Gobs came on. They're very match hardened. They're, they're, you know, as Aaron said, they've been winning ugly. You know, a lot of a lot of the games this year, and even but they seem to know how to win. They're, we saw them win a game at the death. You know, scoring two tries in the last three minutes against New Zealand earlier in the year. They're just winners, and they know how to win. And we need to really build our game on Melbourne and sort of learn, like learn from a team that knows how to win. And I, I think like I can bring it out in us. I, I just the reason mm. I say Olam, it's it's. I'm not saying Olam's a god. It's just no offense to Fata Ape, but even in the first few rounds this year at centre, he was missing four and five and six tackles every week. Mm. He's just a defensive liability, and if he's up against Grant Anderson, like Anderson will score a try. So I'd just rather have Adam there defending him and and Olam, you know, marking Howarth on the other side. And Olam will, Olam will be up for the game too against his old team as well. That's his oh, team. Mm. Won't, won't he ever? Won't he's he's ever. up for every game. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll lift. Mm. He'll lift, but. By him lifting, it'll rise everyone else as well. Um, mm. I, I also think that the kicking game of Caesar could be a point of difference as well. Jerome Hughes, um, from a general play kicking game, hasn't got a very big boot. Tyron Wishan is a noted kicker as well. Um, they don't have a kicking game with Bronson Garlic at the ruck either. 
So I think if there is a point of difference, I think Caesar's kicking, general play kicking and being able to sort of play the, the possession game and keep turning the storm around, that potentially could be an area of strength for, for West Tigers as well. Uh, when, when Storm do get into good ball, yes, the uh, crossfield kicks obviously are a threat, but from a general play kicking game, um, the Storm actually, that's probably one area of weakness. Yeah, uh, I think what can potentially work in our favour for this game as well is the fact that the Storm have been winning ugly. Um, mm. Because if we can stay in the grind and keep it close, we may be able to find a way to run over the top of them at the back end. Obviously, the Leichhardt factor is going to be a thing. Um, if it's a close game towards the back end, say the last 10 minutes, I think the crowd really could be a chance of getting this one over the line. Um, hopefully we get a crowd 10,000 plus. I think the team deserve that considering our last two games at home have been mm. wins. Obviously the Leichhardt one was a very ugly win. The one at Campbelltown was a brilliant win. Um, hopefully it's Leichhardt's turn to have a brilliant win again. Yeah, as, hopefully that heals full. As um, it also comes down to discipline too, right? Yeah, that's been our bugbear this year. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly right. um, uh, I've gone the Cowboys at home. The boy, other boys are gone. The Manly Sea Eagles up there. Uh, is Tommy Turbo back? Is he? He's in the centre. Back in yeah. the centres. Uh, I didn't know that, but um, I don't know. I'll still go Cows at home. Yeah, Tommy, going him in the centres. Okay, that's interesting. Is that? What's the reasoning for that to ease his workload, I guess? Yeah, to, to preserve his, the, the injuries that he's been getting. Yeah, exactly right. Mm. Reduce his workload and um, see how it goes from there. But, look, they're desperate. Again, like Cowboys have been playing pretty well lately and obviously they won without all their origin players against Penrith last week. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a madman tipping an away team. But Manly, Manly just go from you know, like ebbs and flows in, in the way they play. Like they can look like world beaters against the best teams and they look like shit against the, the worst team. So I, I just think we're going to get the best version of Manly this week. DC was too quiet in origin the other night. I don't know. I just think it'll be a, it'll be a really good, fast, open game with plenty of tries if the weather's good up there. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. lot of big ins for Manly. And the Cowboys' defence this year, despite them being in the top eight, their defence is absolutely abysmal. I think Manly definitely have the players to exploit that. Gobbs, any opinion on this game? Uh, I support two teams. I uh, support uh, the Melbourne Storm and whoever's playing them. The, the, the Silver <laughs> Tails, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, an Anzac, non-Anzac, well, Anzac rematch, I guess. Uh, Allianz Stadium, Roosters, Dragons. The Dragons are ten in this. The Dragons have looked all right, but... Um, yeah, the fucking Roosters, they're too good. We obviously learned that last week. Has anyone got um, any reason for Dragons to have an upset? No, this, no, this was the one game I thought was a lock, to be honest. This is the one game that I, I had a little bit of confidence in, although the Roosters are going to have you know, a couple of, you know, a, a makeshift centre and an old centre in Jennings and uh, Tupanua. But I don't think Tupanua's any slouch, given that he nearly ran down a Canterbury winger the weekend before last uh, on a long run. So, yeah, but I think man, the Roosters are too good. The Roosters are too mm. good. The Dragons are a lot better than the team that lost 18-60 to 60 on Anzac Day, um, but I still think the Roosters will be too good for them in this one. Uh, and last game down in Canberra, they're taking on the Knights. We've all gone the Knights. Ponga is back, I believe. He is, he yeah. Is, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're a completely different team when he plays. I mean, Canberra at home, I was tempted, but, um, ladder wise, they're in the top eight, aren't they? They're still, I don't know, they're falling out of it. Okay. But they're in the hunt. They're in the hunt for the eight. So they, they've got something to play for. Uh, where are the Knights sitting? I don't look at the table. I'm going to be honest. I don't they're, hardly look at the, the table. Ra- the Raiders are 10 and the Knights are. are 11, I think, like, or... It's either 11 yeah, they're both on 18. Yeah, they're yeah. both on 18, two points behind the Dragons, who are probably going to lose. Um, yeah, it's a bit, pretty important game, this one. But, yeah, we've all won Knights. Anyone got any argument for the uh, Canberra Raiders? I'm tipping not. I'll, I'll tip the Knights, but 
I think if Canberra are to win, it'll be on the basis that you don't want to see the Newcastle Knights be complacent with Ponga returning. They've done so well without him in terms of being able to amass wins uh, and not have that reliance factor which they've previously had. Just because he returns now, you don't want to see that mindset change to say, oh, Kalen's going to bail us out if we get into strife. I think that's that's potentially an area where mentally they could fall into. And if they do fall into that, well, the Raiders have plenty of strike. They've, they've got no problem scoring points. Um, and I, I think it will just be more along the lines of between the years for the Knights if they do manage to drop this game as opposed to uh, if you look at what they've got on paper and what they've, the way they've been performing, they should get the victory. But it's just sometimes coming and, and having that X-factor player come back into your team, It's people start to sort of relax a little bit and take the foot off the pedal. Not saying that's going to happen, but if it did happen, that's probably the that's that's where they're vulnerable in that regard. The um, we... the bookies kind of take notice of all of the the big inclusions as well. I remember when preliminary odds came out for this game, the Raiders were actually the favourites, and now the Knights have taken mm. over, and that's probably due to the Kalen Ponga factor. factor and the fact that the Raiders are on in a little bit of a slump. Obviously, they lost to the Cowboys the week before they got smashed by us, and then <clears> they <throat> sort of kind of kept it close with the Storm last week, but the Storm were a little bit too good, and the Raiders were a little bit too meh. Um, the, I, I just like the Knights in this one. I think they're a really good chance of getting this win here, especially with Ponga back. I think that's going to really ignite the team. And yeah, whichever team wins this game is going to put a little bit more pressure on the teams in the top eight, could potentially find themselves in the top eight, depending on how the other results go. But uh, yeah, the the loser as well could slip away a little bit. Uh, the Magpies in New South Wales Cup and our Jersey Flag side are both playing at Henson Park against... Uh, well, Cups playing against Newtown and the flag team are playing against the Sharks. So Newtown Jets, uh, they are Sharks. Second grade, is that yep. correct? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Naden named it fullback. Uh, Ali Marlow on one wing. Who else we got in there? Um, Lob City's back on a wing. Uh, Fainu and Sullivan in the halves. That's, um, yeah, that'll be interesting. Talon the Silver at nine. Ruben Porter's gone back down there. Uh, who else we got in there? Kit Lali he, he is at lock. Um, yeah, so yeah, Jordy Miller coming off the bench as well. So, yeah, pretty look. I said a lot, I thought last week the cup side looked pretty good and they got towed up by uh, the Panthers, but um, yeah, Henson Park, three o'clock. So, you, I mean, Henson Park, how, how quick can you get from Henson Park to Leichhardt to both? It'd be pretty. Probably Ten minutes, like enough. Nothing. Yeah, straight, Ten minutes. straight through Marrickville. With traffic, get a park, and yeah, maybe you probably do both, but um, easily. Yeah, it, it's good uh, to see Larchu back. I think is the big thing. He's obviously been missing for quite some time, so I'm really happy to see him back, and I really hope he goes well. Could I say something that would probably piss off you two old blokes? Henson Park sure. is a ship ship place to watch football. I know people the, love it's love the it. Best. It's shit. He's so far away from from the football. It's not that good. It's overrated. I love that that they've created the atmosphere, and it's probably the best second grade team. And they've got their little cult following. But it's shit place to watch. AFL AFL fields don't work for um for rugby league games. I'm sorry. I'm probably pissed off. Every single person born before uh 1980 <laughs> probably just had a heart attack. Me saying, but I don't enjoy. I've been there once and. It's cool and then the history and that sort of thing, but it's not yeah, it, meh, whatever. Take your, um, take your son in the football with you, mate. You've got plenty of room to kick a ball on, while you're watching a game. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've, yeah. Lick and Oval's good for that too. I did that last weekend, literally Lick and Oval. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe because I've got no emotional attachment to it myself and never went there as a kid. Uh, the, the idea of parking your car at the footy sounds good. I don't know if you can still, I think you can still do that. At okay. Henson Park, yep. so that's cool. I like par- the fact that you could um, back your car and send your boot. All right, I'll give you. I'll give you that. That's um, okay. That sounds <laughs> good. But Henson Park overrated. Um, I thought so. I thought it'd be right up your alley with all your hipsters, millennials, and craft beers. And... <laughs> I like. I do like a craft beer. I do like a craft beer. There you go. That's where. That's I thought for sure you'd be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Don't mind a um. Uh, young Henry's. 
uh, pale ale. Yeah, it's a good, good, not a bad beer. Uh, yeah, Jersey Flag um, are playing at 1 p.m. over at Hanson Park. And the girls, as the New South Wales Premiership. So there's a few friend of the show, Tess Staines, in the centers there. So a few few of our NRLW girls getting a run around at uh, the Zurich Center on Saturday at 2 p.m. So that'll finish at, what, 3? You could easily make make that and then head yeah, you'll be uh, able to make that one because that'll be done by Leichhardt. about 3.30. Yeah, yeah like 3:30 that's only a 70-minute game. Um, yeah, and, and a good place. I reckon it'll be a good place to watch footy, at least you don't need binoculars at Concord Oval. But, um, yeah, some, yeah, well, we, some... we were there for the Members' Day a few weeks ago and obviously mm. it was just watching the teams train, but it was a really good view even from the the seats over on the far side. Um, maybe they'd let you sit on the, in, on the seats in front of the... Um, in front of the Zurich Center itself, but yeah, I mm. like. I'm. I don't know if we'll get to see much of this game, but uh, our our development players from last year are all running around in this one because they've got uh, first grade contracts now, plus a couple of our new signings, including Cheyenne McGlone. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot to like about this team. We'll see a lot of these faces in the t- in the NRLW team in a while, but um, a lot of them are probably just going to be sticking around in this competition. Obviously, with uh, the Harvey Norman. Women's Premiership now uh, acting as a bit of a second grade team uh, competition for the NRLW. So it'll be interesting to see how things shape up. I don't know how big the squads are. There's a lot of obviously youngsters. I think your cousin is one of the youngsters who's gotten the call yeah, up. Yeah, she's, she's not listed there. Maybe another she week. She might get a yeah, little she, bit more she's of in a the run squad. around. She's in, the, yeah. she's in the squad. Yeah. Once the NRLW um, starts proper, I think we'll see a lot of those girls um, who got the call up from the junior grades come into the come into the team then. Yeah, uh, Ellie Barnett, for those who don't know, he's my second cousin once removed, I think. Um, Patreon time, right of the guys submitted some questions. Um, Samuel Fainu, Fang, I've got no fucking clue. Everyone's changed their name in the Discord to um, who their favourite player is, fan club. That's a bit of a running joke in the moment, so I've got no idea. Who, who, I lost track of who they all are. Samuel Fang, Samuela Fainu fan club said, Benji got this one horribly wrong. Obviously talking about the Roosters game. Fatape on the wing playing very conservative tonight. Set us up for failure. Roosters already uh, too strong as it is. Sioni Chicken Wings, aka Ben, said, tonight show where Benji is at it as a coach. Got scared by a little rain. Decided to throw in the game plan. We actually looked good with last week. To then try and outmuscle the best pack in the comp. He needs to take ownership of this one, in, in my opinion, between the game plan and selections. It wasn't good. Uh, bringing up old wounds. Oh, Brocker, man. Jeez. Uh, Brocker, mate, write some songs of Airborne. You've written an essay here. Maybe get the boys at Airborne to turn this into a song. Jesus Christ. All right. Why does Benji continue to pick for Tarpe? He got shown up against the Titans, and to be fair, we were lucky we didn't get exposed more that game. We were lucky to get a win. Uh, did I expect us to win yesterday? No, but I've always felt, especially this year, we have always been in games, and there's always a glimmer of hope. With our experienced players coming back, I thought maybe we maybe we might maybe we might maybe we might see more improvement. But the more experienced players coming back yesterday didn't improve the team, and they went backwards. Yes, they were playing the Roosters. I expected better. Nate and Clemmer and Bateman don't deserve to be in the team with their experience. They bring dumb football, brain explosions, and ill discipline. Some of the halves' last tackle plays left a lot to be desired. Didn't take the game on when they should be, especially in that first twenty when we had the chance to attack. Porter had a go and was the best forward on ground, who has only played a handful of games. Stefano, take a look at the players around you while you're shopping yourself around, and there's blokes on minimum wage outperforming you. All the talk through the week about taking on JWH, you failed to take him on one on one or bark and no bite. So, Brocker on a uh, on a, tear, on a rampage on a there, yeah. Put um. Rock and roll in that one. Uh, Shane Colt sent us five bucks on a super chat. Good on you, Shane. So not only does he support us on the Patreon, he supports us uh, as well. He said, up the Maggie's gobs. Guys, if you want to lock James Webb in the Nathan's hot dog eating contest Friday morning, $1. fifty-seven for over 48.5 hot dogs. Isn't the guy got... <laughs> That's um, the thing, is it? I've the never guy... seen a line on a hot dog oh, man. eating competition. <laughs> Yeah, it's fourth. Of, it's a Fourth of July thing. Um, oh, I love it. Not sure if, uh, 
riff is in the comments still from Miami. The guy who wins it every year is being banned for some reason. I can't remember why, and I don't know why I know this. Joey but probably to give everyone else a chance. What's his, what's his name? Sorry, Gobbs. Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. Yeah, he got. They banned him for some reason. They've done the Mel- saw- Melbourne Storm. They've kicked him out of the comp. No, no, he signed a deal with a vegan hot dog company. Oh, he's going <laughs> right. Okay. Um, oh, I love it. You are story. full of information, Gobs. Good on you. I mean, Jason it gives Dave everyone else a chance at the very Miss least. <laughs> yeah. Jason well, James said Brocker was running wide and free. Nice. Uh, there's Riff. He said, uh, I think you need more innuendos. This is Riff from Miami. You need more innuendos. It's just wondering, were you wearing pants during this one? Um, <laughs> you should have had a bib on. That's <laughs> um, <laughs> Define pants. To find pants. Drooling and salivating um, all night long, Josh. We could see. Yeah. That. If you saw the laptop uh, tilting backwards towards the roof, <laughs> we're talking about Sean Bloor. Maybe you might have noticed that. Um, right, eh? Speaking of which, we'll review the game on Monday, 8.30 p.m. We'll be good to get out to Leichhardt. Uh, all, all three of us are heading out there, aren't we, boys? Certainly am. I'll be there. Uh, will you be there, Gobbs? I will be. I look forward to lining up for 45 minutes to get a beer. Uh, <laughs> it's not, is it that long? I don't know. I don't, I don't normally. I was being facetious. Yeah. 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 See, the um, amateurs go at half time for a beer. That's the problem. <laughs> I, I might do the. Uh, Stock up. Yeah, I might, I it doesn't might do, seem might, that long. Yeah, I might do a pub I, call I, right at the game. A pub call. Yeah, it's, well, there's no, there's no game before it, so you might as well. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us again on another uh, Tigers Storm preview. Really enjoyed that. Gave us some great insight into the uh, the Melbourne boys. And yeah, we'll see you at Leichhardt. Catch up. Maybe we'll catch up for a beer once you once you yeah get to the end get of that line, line. Grab a beer. Yeah, we'll um I'll I'll share a, a Pepsi Max and beer with you. Anything else, boys? Before we say good night to Big Dog. No, just thanks to Rob, uh, to Gobbs, and uh, good to have someone on the show that knew who Robbo was and knows what the Canterbury Berries were and the Newtown Blue Bags were and mm. Henson Park. <laughs> we'll do you get, know why we'll they call it Blue Bags? Do you know? Do you know that? Do you want a fun fact to finish the show? I'd love a fun fact because they used to, in the early days they wore potato sacks which were blue. That's oh, there you go. So you, do, so you do know Newtown were the blue I know. bags. I know, I know the history. I'm just saying it's a shit place to okay. watch footy. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I like the history. That hipster's coming out. I'm not a hipster. I'm not a hipster. I do I like craft beer, but I'm not. A, I'm definitely not a hipster. I drive. I drive a V8 that fucking uses 30 liters per hundred clay. I fucking love killing the ozone layer. Global warming is great. I'm not a hipster. <laughs> well, you're certainly not a uh, uh, friend of Anthony Albanese then. Uh, yeah, we'll leave a politics for another day. Um, <laughs> right, boys, as always, thank you to everyone who joined us on the YouTube. If you are listening back on the audio version, join us Monday night if you can, 8 30 p.m. But appreciate, love you all. Thank you very much. We joined us from Belgium, from Miami, from wherever you, you are in the world, um, even Oran Park. But, um, right, boys, as always, go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the See Tigers. You like and have- Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and at Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Mm-hmm.